Howdy folks, I'm Stephen Brown. This is the Creative People Show and I'm here with Dale Norman Green, who's a screenwriter, an actor, and a postmaster. <laughs> for Great local... combination, huh? Yeah. Uh, Steve welcome Brown? to the show. Dale Green. Yes. Uh, no relation. Nice meeting you. <laughs> My mother-in-law's last name is Green, and my grandma on my dad's side's maiden name was Green. So Maybe yeah. we are related. It could be. <laughs> Check, please. I'm out of here. <laughs> Don't. All right. Uh, well, I know that you, uh, I mentioned you're an actor. Uh, one of the places you act is, is uh, Shepherd of the Hills. Are you still in that production? Uh, not this season. Oh, I've okay. been there for four seasons, and uh, the furthest I got was the uh, Preaching Bill. Uh -huh. The guy who opens the show. He's oh, yeah. the only character who actually faces the audience and talks to the audience. Oh, yeah. Breaks yeah. the fourth wall. Like Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in the show we're in, we have no fourth wall. It's, it's interactive. Yeah, and there's us. nobody listening to this show at all, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I was also a square dancer, too. In a, oh, really? Played checkers. So, cool. highly motivated role, I'll tell you. So, you know Carrie Richardson. Yes, very yes. well. A friend of mine I Quality was in the guy. promise with. Yeah, yeah. He's very good. Um, he always wears that coonskin cap, or is it skunk? Skunk skin. I think he takes offense to that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> you can smell him coming, he's, I guess. He's a mess. Anyway, uh, uh, script writer. You're an award-winning script writer. Uh, I, I didn't list out all the awards that you've won, uh, but more recently I saw a picture of you holding a, 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 uh, an award and several laurels for one particular script. You want to talk about that? Yeah, well, um, I've been fortunate enough, blessed enough, to have won six awards so far mm -hmm. um, for screenplays, none of which are attached to a film, but I'm assuming God will open the doors for that later mm -hmm. at his good timing. Yeah. But uh, it's, a, it's a dream. It's a dream yeah. I've had for about 45 years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, how many scripts have you written? Or do you well, have I have two that have won awards, but uh, can I kind of flash back a little bit to sure. catch up to where, yes. I, where we are? Yes. Well, I've always had a vivid imagination, bigger than I should have and since I was a kid. Uh, but it, I think it all started when I was a freshman in high school. The teacher gave an assignment. He said, write a short story. And back then in those days, you did it shorthand. You wrote yeah. with a pen way yeah. back in the yeah. 70s. Don't, don't yeah. do the math. <laughs> and so uh, when it was due, he would go through it and randomly pick one out, and he'd always read it anonymously, not tell them who they are. And he saw mine, and he said, oh, this looks good. It was like eight-page short story. And he read it aloud to the class, and I noticed my classmates, they're all leaning forward, and they're really involved in this. And I thought, oh, man, they really like what it. What grade was this? F uh, freshman, oh, high school, high school 15. Nice. Yeah. Wow, that's And when he was finished, all the, everybody was saying, wow, who wrote that? Who wrote that? They're all <laughs> clamoring for the identity. Yeah. And he gave me a glance, and I nodded, and he said, Dale Green. And one guy in my class, he talked to me later. He said, you know, you're like Clark Kent in real life, but when you write, you're Superman. <laughs> wow. So wow. I took that, and I ran with it, unfortunately. And I started, I, it was determined in my head, I'm going to be the first teenager with a bestseller out on the market. And I just was going to write. And it's like, come on, God, follow me. I got a plan. Uh-huh. And I wrote uh, two novels and about 30 short stories, yeah. none of which are published. Yeah. So I, I'm a writer, not, a, not an author. Yeah. And, and I got nothing but a, a drawer full of rejection slips. Hmm. And I got discouraged after about 40 years, Stephen, 40 years. And I, I gave up trying. I understand. <laughs> so, but when I stopped trying, that's when God trained me to write for the right reason, to write things that would glorify him to make him look good not just me yeah. not to please man yeah and i i never felt such contentment and joy writing for the church and uh i gotta tell you one thing though this is kind of important it's kind of a game changer for me uh the first time i wrote something a short script and uh i cast the whole thing and i even scouted locations big deal for me i directed it and i found a videographer and an editor and that day that we finally filmed it, I was so excited because I'd never done that before. And I was lying in bed at night after filming that. And I remember saying out loud, thank you, Lord, for what you did for me today. And instantly, 
I heard his voice say, no, thank you for what you did for me. And I'm going to tell you, it changed my life. I mean, things like that, mm -hmm. you have an impact when you hear God talking to you. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Christians go the whole life and they never hear God talking. The one time in my life he talks to me, it's about my gifts of writing. So yeah. Yeah. that changed my direction. And ever since then, the last four years, Stephen, um, God made more progress in my dreams than I could in 40 years. Yeah. Wow. That's how it started. You say you're not published, but have you ever considered self-publishing? Oh, yeah. I, is that, I consider that, is that an option? Yeah. I don't want to go that route. Yeah. Um, you got to do everything then. You yeah, know. I don't need the headaches for that. I don't have the <laughs> mentality. Yeah, yeah. But with today's uh, digital, you know, world out there, it's it's it may be a little easier to self-publish. Yeah, it than, is than better than it used to be. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure it is. Um, I just have a feeling. I feel like my niche has been laid out before me. It's to write scripts, and mm -hmm. I'm just waiting for the right person to invest or to believe in the project yeah. and say, "Yeah, we'll fund that. We want to do that project for you." But until then, I just keep. Well, I I got a uh, an audition request uh, for a film being shot, I think, in Florida, uh, but I, and I believe the script had your name on it. Do you know anything about um, that? Don't say my name. Do you know what it was yeah. about? Yeah, I think that was it. Uh, Is it about uh, human trafficking? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, yeah, I think that's been, that's in post-production, or it's already filmed. Oh, it's already filmed, okay. Yeah. Uh, and that was a first for me, yeah. to have my name attached to a project. Yeah. Yeah. I was brought in afterwards as like a, a script doctor. Okay. I polished it. You were from Oxnard, California. <laughs> How long ago were you in Oxnard, and what brought you here to Missouri? When you're living in Oxnard, there's, it's such an unusual name. I remember there was yeah. a bumper sticker that said, what's an Oxnard? And it's, it's a farming community. But, um, yeah. yeah, I was raised there. Um, and I moved to Orange County after that. Uh -huh. And I was a mailman, a city carrier. Mm -hmm. And I delivered mail in Seal Beach. And there's this older couple there. And they said, our daughter's coming to visit uh, next week. You want to come, come have lunch? And I was a, a divorcee, and she was a widow. And, and yeah. And we came together on a blind date, and we fell in love. And I followed her out here to Branson. Oh, she's still she's married from today. Here. Yeah. Nice. I think you've already shared some of your heart about, about this. But any uh, practical advice or some kind of wisdom that you'd like to impart to the to the viewers about people wanting to get into script writing or acting or uh well that's comparing apples and oranges um yeah I, no I'm, i didn't mean you had to compare oh it's I'm okay yeah what, oh I, any, I, any one of those well subjects. i tried with my novel writing i wrote two novels like i told you uh i prefer script writing because with novels you got to lay out the adjectives and the adverbs you have to describe everything i just yeah. want to get on with the story yeah so that's what the camera does see so you save a step the camera does all the uh, describing for you You just yeah. tell a story yeah. with dialogue that that's why i preferred that um and acting for me is cathartic or therapeutic yeah you can express yourself you know i get that you know you're not as a christian not supposed to lose your temper or hit people or something. But you can on camera. It's okay if you're paid <laughs> you're, for it and you're, you're someone I'm just else. pretending. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's just acting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, my character in the, sh in the show down in Branson, I'm yeah. a, uh, a quick-tempered black sheep of the family. <laughs> uh, and, uh, oh, but it's fun. Uncle Stanley, who just got out of prison, you know, for 18 mm. months, 18 months of hard labor. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's a different character for me, especially there's a line in there where I say, uh, I know what beer smells like, and I like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't. <laughs> I've tried alcohol. I've tried five different types of alcohol in my life, beer, yeah. wine, some other mixed drink and whatnot. I didn't like any of them. I think I was born with an aversion to the smell and taste of alcohol. Could be a good thing. I don't know. Anything. I have a little experience with stand-up comedy, and it yeah. was uh, the first time I did it was a amateur night in Hollywood. It's a comedy store. Maybe mm -hmm. you've heard of that. Yeah. And but wow. it's late at night. It's like a eleven, twelve, one in the morning. That's yeah. where all the amateurs go up there and get your stab at it. And everything's funny then because they're all drunk, <laughs> and you feel like, yeah, I'm Robin Williams up here. Yeah. Um, 
my favorite shtick, I think, that set me apart from others. Not that I'm proud of it, but I grew up doing this. My dad would always say, hey, talk backwards for Aunt Burl, you know, talk backwards. So, <laughs> so I would listen to tape replayer and run it backwards and try to mimic it when I was a kid. Yeah. So one of my, <coughs> my signature impression was Humphrey Bogart backwards. Okay. Okay. Then that's smoke going back into the cigarette. I get you. That's it. Ah, <laughs> oh, the crowd went wild. Was that the play it again, Sam? Or uh, close. Or that, uh, and then I do uh, well, uh, backwards with an echo. That was a little harder. Now I'm sure you're all wondering, what was it he said? Yeah. <clears throat> this is the direct translation of what I just said backwards, okay. forward. <clears throat> you ready? Now you must remember this. A no-nonsense pantyhose comes at a no-nonsense price. So tell them bogey sent you. <laughs> That's it. What's your uh, thought process to starting writing? How do you how do you begin writing? What is do you start with an idea, or you just start writing things that come into your head? First of all, do you have an idea, an epiphany, as it were? Uh, uh, well, Stephen, I have a I have a drawer full of ideas. I'm seriously. I just wish I had a couple of lives I could pursue them all. Mm -hmm. um, it usually comes from, sometimes I dream it. Mm -hmm. I wake up with this great idea. Um, but when I have an idea, I'll be like, me, I was delivering the mail, oh, I gotta stop. Or maybe misdelivering the mail, okay? All these thoughts. <laughs> and I keep scribbling notes. And uh, when I go home, I take, empty my pockets, I put it all together. And I just usually sit down and longhand write a bullet point. What happens first, what happens next. And then um, sometimes I have, it's like a treatment. You Plug, plug yeah. in some dialogue, and you see the whole story before you, and you start adding to it. Pretty soon, it's big enough to go to the keyboard. Hmm. Uh, you know, in the old days, when I first started writing, it was a typewriter. Yeah, yeah. You know that we all did that, and everybody kept saying in the '80s when the word processor came out, you got to get a word processor. I mm -hmm. was scared to death of it. Yeah. And I remember I bought it, and it sat on my desk in this big box for about three months, and I was scared to death of it. Finally, I got it open, and I loved it. I love a word processor until someone said, you need to get a computer. There's a program <laughs> for writing scripts. Oh, I can't possibly. Yeah. No, it's, we're married. Did you, start, did you start with the old manual typewriters? Mm, yeah. <laughs> oh, my goodness, yeah. Get them all tangled up. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. I remember that, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Or you get that white out. You get down <laughs> to the bottom of the page, no mistake. You make a mistake, oh. yeah. Yeah. And then, they, and then came along the electric typewriters, and that was much, much faster. Yeah, it's like uh, a self-propelled lawnmower. IBM's electric. Yeah. And you started uh, with the Postal Service back in California, and you transferred here? Yeah, it's yeah. been it's 39 years now. 39. I mean, to I put it in perspective, Stephen, Reagan's first term is when I started. Yeah. yeah I've seen a lot. Automation, digita digitization, and uh, I think this is just my opinion. I think the best thing the post office ever came up with, bar none, is the forever stamp. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I love those. I, yeah. I go buy them up, you know, three or four books at a time because yeah. if the price goes up, then I don't exactly. have to pay Exactly. You don't have to deal with those makeup stamps, the one yeah. cent, the three cent, you know. And wh <laughs> you get this a lot probably. Why did it take them so long to get the uh, self-adhesive stamps? I mean, the, <laughs> it, the sticker had been around for quite a while mm -hmm. before <laughs> it didn't have to lick the thing. Oh, boy, uh, that, was, uh, that was progress. But yeah, you see, no. conspiracy theories aside, yeah. They have to get your DNA somehow. Oh, okay. So you still have to lick <laughs> the stamp shut, don't you? So Big Brother can still find you. Like the envelope, with yeah. The I, get the I, get the envelope. I get the self envelope. I get the self adhesive envelopes too. Well, that's I it. hardly ever use stamps or, or envelopes out, or mail. You know, it's always yeah. like email or hey, hey, text hey, hey, or hey, whatever. Hey, hey. Sorry. Hey, hey, you know, it's people like you I that got are putting this unemployed on the street. You know I have them just in case I need them. You know, but uh, yeah, like for bills that need to go go in the mail, yeah. but. But you oh, know what? Those I, are electronic now. Mostly. I've fallen for that ease too. I, I started 
texting my sisters and my brothers happy birthday. And I thought, oh, I just did it to myself. I could have <laughs> had 55 cents in the budget. <laughs> yeah. you know? And in contrary, I used, I used to be a uh, RCA, which really? is a rural carrier associate, which basically just when the regular carrier is out on right. Saturdays or vacation or whatever, uh, would take their place down in Crane. And uh, I found out in the course I went through to do that, uh, I did not know this. I thought the Postal Service was a direct uh, arm of the U.S. government and got funded from the government. But no, it's a self-contained, self, yeah. uh, self uh, not self-governing, uh, but I know what you mean. self-supportive uh, I think it happened in entity. 71, I think it's... Yeah. Yeah. Take no federal money from, from right. the government. It's all from sales of stamps and envelopes uh -huh. and uh, things like that. I was a city carrier in California for 22 years. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when I got married to Cheryl, my soulmate, I came out here to Branson. I didn't want to deal with the weather extremes, you know, 100 degree heat and yeah. the snow. So I took an indoor job. So I became a clerk. So I had to learn a whole nother craft. Yeah. But I, I tell you, Stephen, I like that so much better. Because when you're out on the street, you know, you got the dogs. I've been bit <laughs> three times. and People and think that's just a, uh, a stereotype. Or no, I really think it's, it's true, though. It is. They can I'd rather be inside because uh, <clears throat> they come to you. Yeah. And when you're tired of the customer, you can say, thanks, come again. Next customer, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you about the dog. This is really strange. But it's like a, it's like a color association with a territorial instinct. Uh -huh. When they see a mailman's uniform. Yeah. And you won't believe this, but I was doing laundry at my apartment back in the like, 80s or so. I came back to my apartment with my sleeve, the, with a mailman logo over the basket. And there was a group of people in the jacuzzi with a dog. And I'm told the dog made a double look. He looked at me, roar! He <laughs> chased me around the jacuzzi. And I should have just thrown him with a shirt. But how would he have known? <laughs> I don't know. And do I smell like letters or something? Uh, your personal uh, mascot would be Cliff Clavin, right, uh, from Cheers? Oh, <laughs> yeah, we're quite proud of him. <laughs> we're gonna, he should be the next postmaster general, I guess. Uh, no, he's, he's okay. He's a good guy. Yeah, he's, he's a great actor, too. He's been in a lot of uh, family-friendly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. My, my associate producer over here asked me to ask you a question. Oh, what kinds of uh, projects? What kind of projects or goals or, or things you got coming up in the works? Ah, ah. <laughs> um, <laughs> He's going to have to get a credit okay. now on that. As okay, you asked me about my, my scripts. I have two scripts that are, have been awarded or, or, or at least selected. The first one is called Secrets of the Black Forest. Uh -huh. It's about uh, inhabitants of a sinless society on an island all to themselves. Mm -hmm. and they'll never grow old. They'll never die. Never get sick. Like as long Eden. as they... I'm sorry? Kind of like Eden. Yeah, it's yeah. inspired by that story. Okay. And uh, as long as they obey God's one simple commandment, which mm -hmm. is do not enter the black forest. But two young lovers couldn't resist the lure of the forbidden. So they mm -hmm. trespass to the black forest. That changes everything. Uh, that's one. And then the second one, uh, it's up right now. At, we have uh, Orlando. There's an International Christian Film Festival. Yes. So that's up for nomination for Best Script. Yeah. And it's a, called Past Tense. It's a uh -huh. political thriller about a Smithsonian researcher who happens upon a 160-year-old map. And it details a secret tunnel within the White House huh. that falls into the hands of the Secret Service. And they investigate. And indeed, there's a trap door behind the fireplace in the green room. And they investigate. And there's a tunnel collapse with three bodies in there. They've been there for 160 years. And mm -hmm. one of the bodies has been uh, forensically determined to be Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> that sets the whole story there. Okay. And that started out as a dream. You that don't was a dream. Give away yeah. too much. You know, in yeah. case it so that's the whole story. Thanks for coming. Good night, everybody. That's it. <laughs> that's Gosh, yeah, spoiler we, alert. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, well, it's, it's been a pleasure meeting you. I, I've talked with you online and seen, you know, stalk, I mean, uh, observed your uh, <laughs> Facebook. Stalking. Page. I say I'm a contemporary anthropological observer because stalker is such an ugly word, you know. I looked that up. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> well, you know, we get along pretty well in cyberspace. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. But face yeah. to face, we're just, you know. Yeah, we're about the same age too. Yeah. I think. Yeah, so don't don't do the math again. Don't do the math. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs>
there comes a time when you stop lying about your age and start bragging about it, you know. Yeah. I tell people I'm uh, 87. Oh, you look pretty good for your age. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> now, how old are you really? 58. And you think we're about the same age? Yeah. Well, you got more hair. No, I'm, you 60, got all your I'm hair. 64, but oh, okay. Well, no, actually, I'm 96 terrible. years old, so I'm, I look pretty <laughs> good, don't I? Yeah, you do. All right. Well, I uh, appreciate you coming in, and yeah. I appreciate your, your candor. Anything you'd like to pass on, your wisdom and knowledge? I can read your mind <laughs> at no extra cost. <laughs> I, I just want to say this, okay? Um, when I made up my mind to write for the right reason, which is to, to glorify God who gave me my gifts, um, I was lying in bed that one night, and I was saying, I said out loud, did I tell you this already? Oh, I don't know. Oh. I said, thank you, God, yes. for what you did for me. Yes, yeah. and he said. Yeah, and that just, that had just guided me. I mean, it, it's a real, uh, it made an impact on my life. So I'm trying to do everything I do. I've got to tell myself that it's not about me. And, and it's so easy to get transported into that position of, look at me, look at me, especially in this entertainment business. And I have to fight it. And I find myself, if I just keep uh, turning down opportunities to be at the front, God keeps pushing me to the front himself wow. without me trying. So there's something there, but I'm not sure what. But well, there's it. a reason why it's called show business. There's two parts to it. There's the show, and then there's the business. Uh, it, whether it's in music or, or acting, uh, directing, producing, whatever, People have a misconception that if you're good enough, people are going to look for you and discover you. You're going to get discovered. Right. No, that doesn't happen. Uh, I've, I've never seen that in my time in, in uh, entertainment industry, maybe once in a while, but uh, that's not how it works. You have to do the work, put in the work, and, and create your resume, you know, build your resume, build your demo reel, uh, your uh, credits, and so forth. Submit yourself. Go actively, actively looking for these roles and opportunities. For it doesn't come easy. It's yeah. work. Yeah. There's some footwork and knocking on doors. And oh yeah. Phone calls. Oh yeah. Yeah. I've I've just booked my 51st role in acting. Good. Uh, great. Yeah. And we haven't shot that scene yet. Probably well, maybe I should interview next, you next month. Uh, they're mostly you know independent. Uh, films uh -huh. and uh, well not just films but commercials and and TV and theater I'm in a theater uh, presentation now program but uh, only about three or four of those have been nationally broadcast and a couple of them you'll find them on Amazon Prime and so forth but uh, it's it's look and, and it's amazing that I see so many, I get so many, I, I get on these uh, websites like Actors Access and Backstage uh -huh. and uh, Casting uh, America, uh, those national uh, websites. You create a profile and uh, tell them about all about yourself and your, your experience and so forth, your pictures and demo reel and resume and all that stuff. And they match casting announcements to your profile and send you emails. I get four or five a day for an old fat balding guy like me and, and that's that's amazing because I, I'm not the traditional you know uh, leading man type person or a person that you would think would be uh, cast in movies but they need real looking people like me too you know yeah real <laughs> I don't see you as old fat or balding actually <laughs> well I do <laughs> <laughs> yeah okay all right well, appreciate it and thank you very much. Thank you, Stephen. God bless you. Thanks for having me.